wherever I am. I'll praise Him whenever I can. I'll praise Him for His love surrounds me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I'll praise Him whenever I can. I'll praise Him for His love surrounds me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I'll praise Him whenever I can. I'll praise Him for His love surrounds me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus lifted me. Hallelujah. Well, good evening, everyone. It's good to be able to join with you again for another Thursday evening online service and if you're just uh, if you're new to tuning in with us uh, my name is Troy Seabright and I'm the pastor here at the South Simon Pentecostal Church and this of course is my better half Marie uh, which makes me uh, sound good no matter how how bad I mess it up amen so it's good to be with you again for a time of worship and, uh, and a devotion a little bit later on so we're going to open up uh, tonight in prayer and uh, begin our time of worship together. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful tonight, Lord, for a chance to come together and worship like this. And Lord, I thank you for each person that decides to, to tune in and to join in along with us. Lord, I pray you'll bless each and every one of them. Let them sense your Holy Spirit as we worship together and lift up the holy name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for any prayer requests that may be represented amongst the, the group tonight. Lord, I pray you'll minister to their needs. And, and, and touch whatever situation that they may find themselves in. And Lord, be with us tonight as we worship together. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. So just one, uh, one quick announcement before we continue on. Uh, this will be the last Thursday online service for a while. Uh, I'm going to be taking some uh, time off throughout the summer. And uh, we'll be announcing when, when things start to ramp up again a little bit later on. So uh, continue to tune in to our, our Facebook page and we will be uh, keeping everybody up to date uh, the best we can. He poured in the oil and the wine, the kind that restores my soul. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road and he poured in the oil and the wine. I'm so glad that he poured the anointing oil upon my life and filled me with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God bless you as we sing this one together. He poured in the oil and the wine The kind that restored my soul Born in the oil and the wine. 
poured in the oil and the wine. Kind and restoring my soul, found me bleeding and dying on that Jericho road, and he poured in the oil and the wine. And I'm making a people of praise That will move through this land by my spirit And will glorify my precious name Build your church, Lord Make us strong, Lord Join our hearts through your Son In the kingdom of your Son. For I'm building people of power, and I'm making a people of praise that will move through this land by my Spirit and will glorify my. church, Lord, make us strong, Lord, join our hearts through your Son, make us one, Lord, in your body, in the kingdom of your Son, for I'm building the people of power, and I'm church, Lord, make us strong, Lord, join our hearts through your Son, make us one, Lord, in your body, in that kingdom of your Son. Amen and amen. Build your church, Lord, make us strong, Lord. Join our hearts through your Son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Move in our midst, Lord. Let the Spirit be sent. Revive us again. Move in our midst, Lord. Let the Spirit descend. Move in our midst, Lord. Revive us again. Like the dove at the Jordan. Like the rock. Revive us again. Hallelujah. Well, that's my prayer tonight. We have the Holy Spirit descend on us again, like it did at the day of Pentecost. Like the dove descended upon the Lord Jesus at the Jordan, and the rushing wind at the day of Pentecost. Move again, Lord Jesus. 
Revive your church once again, Lord, by your spirit. Lord, we all desire another move of, of your spirit. Move on your church, O oh God. Move in our midst, Lord. Let us see the power of Almighty God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hungry for another wave of glory. It's a fresh touch you have promised could be mine. Pull the chair up to the table, Lord. I'm ready now to dine. It's another empty vessel. Touch you have promised could be mine. Pull the chair up to the table, Lord. I'm ready now to dine. It's another empty vessel. Fill it, Lord, another time. I am hungry for another way. slow it down just a little bit sing this one Lord I need you the verse is a prayer and it says Lord I come and I confess bowing here I find my rest and without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart Chorus says, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Verse number two says, when sin runs deep, your grace is more. Hallelujah. Say amen to that. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Where you are, Lord, I am free. Hallelujah. God bless you as we sing this one. I pray that it will be your, your testimony and your prayer tonight. For sure, we're going through things that we need the Lord Jesus to hold our hand through. Hallelujah. Lord, I come and I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. And without you, I fall apart. You're the one 
that guides my heart. Let's sing that again. Lord, I come and I confess bowing here I find my rest without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart Lord I need you Lord I need
Amen. Certainly one fact we'll never get away from, and that's the fact that we need the Lord. There's always circumstances that come up, and we just we don't we simply don't know how to get through them. We call upon the Lord for his help. So first Thessalonians chapter three, and we're looking at the first five verses. Continuing on with our study through First Thessalonians, the last time that we looked at, uh, at this was in chapter 2 and spoke on being above reproach. It was a couple of weeks ago, and of course last, I think it was last week or the week before we had some technical issues and we missed a couple of, couple of weeks there. Anyway, we'll continue on. So the last time, speaking about above reproach, the three points that I focused on was the fact, in chapter 2, like I said, uh, Paul's reputation was above reproach. And also how the gospel itself was presented by Paul and accepted by the Thessalonian church was also above reproach. And thirdly, the church's reputation as they grew in faith and became imitators of the gospel was also above reproach. Tonight, as we look at chapter 3, we'll get a closer look at the reason why Paul had written this letter to the Thessalonians. And uh, I mentioned briefly before that Paul had sent Timothy to visit and to encourage the church, and the news that Timothy brought back to Paul was encouraging enough to Paul for him to write the epistle and to exhort them for their faithfulness. We're looking at the first five verses in chapter 3 tonight. It says, Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith that no one should be shaken by these afflictions, for you yourself know that we are appointed to this. For in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation just as it happened, and you know. For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor may have been in vain. So verse 1 starts off by Paul saying that he could no longer endure it. He's referring to thinking about the church uh, of Thessalonica and how they were dealing with their afflictions and the persecution from the city. These were people that uh, Paul had led to Christ himself, nurtured them along as they grew in their faith and were able to establish the church in that city. Now here Paul is working for the ministry in, in, in Athens with his team and he still has a heart for the people and for the church that he had left in the previous city. And the time that, that come that he could no longer endure it and he sends Timothy to see if they were still thriving in their faith. It's a heart of empathy. That's not really a word that we hear used very much today. So what would be a definition of empathy? The best definition I could find uh, defining the biblical empathy, empathy is your pain in my heart. That's your pain in my heart. The Apostle Paul knew that the church in Thessalonica, or Thessalonica I find it hard to pronounce, they were experiencing their affliction and persecution, and, and it became a matter of Paul's own heart. Now, how, how do we today understand empathy? And better yet, how can we show empathy to others? Where can we find examples of empathy in scriptures? First, I looked up an example in Exodus 18 and, and verse 7. And Moses and Jeth Jethro's empathy for each other. 
Exodus 18 and 7 says, So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other about their well-being. And they went on into the tent. Now I'm sure we're familiar with that story as Moses began to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he had to leave his wife and his two sons with, with her family. But there came a time when Jethro, his father-in-law, was able to visit Moses on the back of the desert and to offer him some counsel. And they showed empathy to one another. They were each concerned with one another's well-being. And there's also the people's empathy for Paul in Philippians 4 and 10. And Paul says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked an opportunity. Here Paul is under house arrest or prison, however you want to say it, and the people of the Philippian church had Paul's well-being in their heart. They knew that Paul was struggling and had more than one kind of pain for sure. They were concerned about him and showing empathy, and Paul's pain was in their heart. Another example is Paul's empathy for the church at Corinth. In 2 Corinthians 2 and 4, we read, For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote to you with many tears, not that you should be grieved, but that you might know the love which I have so abundantly for you. Paul had a deep empathy for the churches. The Corinthian church, with all of her struggles and chaos, still finds a place in the Apostle Paul's heart. If we go on now to Galatians 3 and 13, we see the empathy that Jesus shows to us. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And also in Hebrews 2 and verse 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Jesus took our pain, our hurt, even our sin unto himself when he became the sacrifice for us. Because Jesus cares for us. He had our hurt in his heart. Now in the scripture we just looked at, and what we see from the Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians, we can, we can see how empathy is quite common in Scripture. See, now Moses and his father-in-law were concerned about one another. The people of the church of Philippi had empathy for Paul. And Paul had empathy towards the church at Corinth. And of course, we see the empathy of the Lord Jesus as he took our pain and sin unto himself. So as we look at ourselves today, and how does empathy fit into our lives? I've been asking a lot of challenging questions over the last little while. Last week, when we looked at chapter, last time, when we looked at chapter 2, spoke about being above reproach and asked to challenge ourselves but how our character is. Are we living above reproach? Are we representing the gospel in a way that keeps it above reproach? Tonight in chapter 3, the challenge is to search our heart for empathy for others, how other people's pain rests in our heart or does it at all. As Jesus walk, was walking with his disciples and explaining to them some things that would have to take place uh, as we draw closer to the, the end of the time, he said in Matthew 24 and 12, 
So then because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. You know, when Scripture reveals something like this to us, we have a responsibility to understand what's being said and to recognize how we can apply this to ourselves. We can all agree that the struggle is real. A lot of times when people are dealing with hurt, we all wish that there's some way that we can just avoid it altogether. But a heart of empathy, a heart of feeling somebody else's pain in yourself would make a world of difference to someone. You know, as Paul had left the church in Thessalonica and his ministry brought him on to, to Athens, for sure he had brought upon himself the burdens and, and the care of helping those in the particular place that he was in. But there was still a place in his heart for those brothers and sisters that he had uh, left in Thessalonica. It was a burden strong enough that he could not bear it any longer and had to send one of his colleagues, Timothy, to find out how they were doing. It was a heart of empathy. He was feeling somebody else's pain in his own heart. I want that to be a bit of a challenge to us. How do we respond? How do we react when we know that somebody else is going through a hard time, going through family struggles, having some other kind of financial struggles and can't really, it's finding it tough to put food on the table, having spiritual struggles. How, how does it sit in our own heart? When we have the Holy Spirit in us, how does that cause us to respond to others? I pray that we'd have the heart of, of Christ for others. The idea of feeling somebody else's pain in our own heart. It's part of being church. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, I forget exactly how it goes, but when, when one part of the body hurts, the entire body feels it. But when, when a brother and sister in Christ is hurting, others in, in the body of Christ should feel that pain as well and be there for them. We intercede for them. Just as Paul interceded by sending Timothy to check on them and see how they were doing. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this this passage tonight. Lord, I thank you that we see that you took our pain and our curse, our sin onto your heart and to your life and you brought across for us. Lord, you showed an empathy there. Father, I pray that there be ways that, that we can intercede for others Give us your heart and your compassion and your concern and your love for others. So that when we see somebody else hurting, it hurts us. Father, help us to grow more to be like you. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit will, will speak to our hearts tonight. And as those who watch this at a later date, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to their hearts as well. In your precious name, and Lord, be with us as we continue for a time of worship. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
this chorus, Create in me a clean heart, O God. It was David's prayer. We say Psalms 51. He was calling out and asking for forgiveness for things that he had done. And he asked the Lord to create in him a, a clean heart to refresh him and to restore him. To re restore and renew a right spirit within him. I pray that's our prayer tonight. The Lord create into us a clean heart, a refreshed heart, a heart of Christ. Fill it up and make me whole. 
Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Touch my eyes that I might see. You washed my feet that I might walk in His way. Cleanse my heart from all sin. He gave me perfect peace within. Why Savior is He. He had compassion on me. He touched my eyes that I might see. Washed my feet that I might walk in. my heart from all sin, gave me perfect peace within, what a wonderful Savior is He, He had compassion on me, touch my heart. Cleanse 
my heart from all sin and gave me perfect peace within what a wonder for Savior is he precious Jesus Father, I appreciate you. I love you, adore you, and I bow down before you. Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Son, what a wonder you are, Son of God, what a wonder you are, Son of God, cleanse me. Son of God, what a wonder you are. We'll try that one again. <laughs> Son of God, what a wonder you are. Son of God, what a wonder you are. You cleanse my Sing this last one here and then we'll, we'll close in prayer. Born again, there's really been a change in me. Born again, just like Jesus said. Born again and all because of Calvary. And I'm glad, so glad that I've been born again. Amen. That's my testimony tonight. That I've been born again. There has really been a change in me. 
God bless you as we sing this song. Born again, there's really been a change in me. Born again, just like Jesus said. Born again, and all because of Calvary. And I'm glad, so glad, that I've been born. like Jesus said, born again and all because of Calvary, and I'm glad so glad that I've been born again, born again, there's really been a change. like Jesus said, born again and all because of Calvary, and I'm glad, so glad that I've been born again. Amen, amen, amen. I pray that it's been a blessing to you tonight. Challenge us to see things the way that God would have us see things. And, and our fellow brothers and sisters, and even those that are not serving the Lord, see them through the eyes of Christ and have the empathy and then feel their pain in our hearts the same as Christ did. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together of worship and praise and to look into your word for for just a few moments tonight. Lord, I, I pray that we'll have wisdom and guidance as we continue on through the summer and to see what you would want us to do and what your Holy Spirit would want us to do for others. Father, we thank you for all the things you've done for us. And Lord, I thank you for carrying us through the pandemic this far. And Lord, as we look towards the next couple of months and, and seeing things open back up, Lord, I can't help but thank you. Thank you for protecting us the way you have. And Lord, we feel other people's hurts that were not so fortunate as what we were. And Lord, we feel their pain tonight, and we pray on behalf of them tonight. That Lord, you will, you will minister to them. And there be some way that we can reach, reach them so that they know that we love them and we're praying for them and we are here for them. Father, we thank you once again for tonight. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you once again. And uh, like I said, uh, this will be the last one now for a little while. I'll be taking some time off. And uh, as the summer progresses, we'll see how how things are, and uh, we'll be making announcements on the church's Facebook page, so uh, be sure to keep checking in every once in a while and, and uh, looking for the announcements. So God, God bless you, and enjoy the warm weather while we, we have a few days before. I'm not going to say it. God bless you. <laughs>